Hello and thank you for joining us for today's Barker webinar. The webinar title today is 25 Innovative Sales and Marketing Ideas for Your Business. And it's a little bit different than our past webinars where we really dig into one specific topic. And in today's webinar, we're going to highlight 25 different things that you can do in your business today to help drive sales and help drive new business. On the call today is myself, I am Brad Smith, I'm the CEO and founder of Barker Marketing. And joining me is Tony Wiecek, our Director of Marketing. And combined, we've both been in the marketing field for 20 years. Um, specifically, uh, we've, we've focused recently on digital marketing. So over the last 10 to 15 years, I've focused on digital marketing, website development, search engine optimization, how to use social, how to use online tools to drive more engagement and build your online brand. And Tony has some amazing corporate experience in, in the world um, from, from product marketing to service marketing and he's going to inject some uh, great takeaways for us today that he's learned in that time as well. Our agenda for today is really just built on sharing ideas. So we're going to look at ideas, some more ideas, and some even more ideas. Uh, we're going to highlight 25, and, and just to uh, forewarn you, we have an extra one in there too. So you're going to get 26 great ideas today. Um, and we're going to do a, a round robin. So I'll share an idea, delve into a little bit. Tony will share some. But throughout the whole presentation, I want to encourage everybody to use that question panel to the right. If you have a specific question, or if you have uh, any information that you'd like to share, maybe an experience that you've had, please go ahead and share that. And if it makes sense, we'll interrupt the presentation, cover it right at that time. And if not, we'll wait till the end and have a answer and quest, uh, question panel too. So to start us off with innovative ideas, number one, use Google AdWords to target customers. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, th this really isn't innovative, right? Google's been doing this for how many years now? Ever, ever since they launched, we've, we've seen ads there, we've seen keywords there. And that's true. Uh, you've been able to, to pay to get your listing at the top of, of Google rankings for quite some time. You can buy and purchase specific keywords or specific search strings and you can show up at the top. And a lot of companies out there do that. Uh, there's still a lot that don't um, simply because they, they don't understand the process or, or how you go about doing it. I'm here to tell you that um, we help a lot of companies with their, their Google AdWords buys and it is a very effective way, um, depending on your industry and what you're trying to, to sell and market, at reaching the exact right audience when they're buying. But this is a webinar about innovation. And I want to dig a little bit deeper into AdWords and show you some innovative ways that you can use AdWords beyond just traditional keyword buys. So again, when people think of, of pay-per-click or Google Ads, they think of keywords. But Google has a display ad network. Okay, so publishers all across the country, Forbes Magazine, New York Times, some of the biggest, most well-respected publishers out there serve up Google's ads because they're part of the Google Ad Network. So you can really target your ads to show up on very specific publications, publications dedicated to your individual industry. You can pick and choose where your ads show up. And display ads are oftentimes much more cost effective than keyword ad buys, which in, in some industries like, like finance and real estate and cars can get rather expensive. So you can be much more strategic in how you buy those ads. Uh, there's all, also something uh, that you can do to really target a specific set of people. So let's say your company does email marketing or um, you have a, a really in-depth CRM system where you capture client and prospect data and you, and you capture email addresses. If you can export a list of email addresses, you can actually upload those into Google AdWords and begin targeting just that list. Okay, You're only paying to reach people that are already on your prospect list, that are already on your radar. It's a great way to surround those people when they're searching for things. And, and I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, you're a local restaurant or a pizza shop or, or something along those lines. Okay, And you have a great customer database, you can upload that into Google. Now, you can buy terms like pizza, or you could buy a term like restaurant, and your ads can show up, but you can even think outside the box. So think about a, a basic term like, like dinner, or even recipe. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could have your restaurant show up when somebody's searching for a recipe? Maybe you tailor your ad to say something like, um, don't spend time cooking tonight, reward yourself. Come out to dinner, visit us, here's a coupon, here's 5% uh, off your, your order. So there's ways to use Google AdWords more cost effectively and reach the exact right target audience. Um, we even have been working with this uh, uh, a third party system that allows you to drill down and have ads targeted to a specific physical address. Um, we're, working with, uh, we're working with a lot of medical practices now. So let's say uh, you're in the medical field. Uh, you're a doctor, physician, dentist. Uh, a big part of your business is built upon referrals. So getting other physicians, other medical practices to refer into your company. We can go out and have ads begin to show up to physicians when they're at home. Uh, to nurses when they're at home, to doctor's offices, so your ads begin to show up in offices. Just great, really innovative ways to use digital marketing that don't cost a lot and really, really reach your, the right target audience. Uh, there's some other ways that you can get in front of new people too. Uh, so we've talked a lot about existing lists. You can create something called lookalike audiences. So you can upload a list of your top clients in Google and, and other ad platforms. We'll go out there and see what characteristics they have, and we'll begin serving those up, ads up to similar demographics. So really, really innovative stuff and interesting ways that you can use online advertising to really drive business and visibility in your organization. And Tony, I'm going to pass it over to you because you're going to touch on probably one of my favorite types of online advertising, which is remarketing. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Uh, you know, I would guess that everyone on this call or most people who, who are involved with marketing for their organization in any way realizes the importance of their website and getting people to their site, whether it's to find out you know, your hours or your phone number or uh, what kind of products and services you offer. Well, that makes sense because people coming to your site and people returning to your site all translates into a greater likelihood that those same people are going to buy your product or schedule service from you or make an appointment. Um, and that's really where remarketing comes in. Uh, remarketing is it's a low cost way to continue promoting yourself to those people that you've already gotten to come to your website. Those people who have already come, they've shown interest in your business, in your product or service, and you know because of that that they are the exact right target audience. They are the people who are out there who are looking for a service or a product like yours. And now through remarketing, you can continue getting in front of them and getting your brand and your message in front of them as they travel or browse along the internet. So they come to your site and then what happens is you have ads that will pop up around the internet when they go to their favorite news sites or with their news feed in Facebook or on YouTube and you will stay in front of them as they're going about their business and doing other things online. So you remain top of mind and it's an encouragement for them to come back to your site and to, and to take another look at you. So if they didn't already make a purchase or make an appointment, this encourages them to check back in with you and see what you have to offer. So again, this is a very targeted advertising approach and something that you can do online uh, at a very reasonable cost. Yeah, and, and to share a practical example of this in, in action, we work with several staffing and recruiting companies. So they help companies find talent and um, recruit top employees. And we looked at their website analytics and we, we found something alarming. One of their goals is to get people to apply for specific jobs that they're looking to fill. And what we found was that about 70% of people coming to that page were, were bouncing. So they weren't taking an action. They were seeing a job and they were leaving. Then we dug a little bit deeper and we said, well, those 30% that are taking action, a good majority of them had our return visitors. Okay, so they had been to the site in the past. They hadn't converted that first time, but when they came back, they converted. They filled out that form. They applied for a job. And we looked at this and we said, wow, there's a big opportunity there. And what we found is that return visitors were two times, two to three times more likely to convert 
the new visitors. So we said, let's focus on getting people back to the website. How are we going to do that? Well, we install a cookie on their um, machine. So when they come to our client's website, a little cookie, a little tracking token is placed on their machine. And then they leave our client's website. And when they go to Facebook, ads for our clients start to pop up. When they go to the Buffalo News, ads start popping up. When they go to Forbes Magazine, ads start popping up. So these ads start following people around. And it increases the likelihood that they get back to your site and increases the likelihood that they convert and do business with you. So really, really effective way to reach the right target audience. All right, tip number three is really understanding what you can and can't do with SEO, search engine optimization. So search engine optimization is all about getting targeted traffic to your website. When somebody's searching for the product or service that you offer, you want them to find your website. Now in theory that sounds, it makes common sense. We want more and more traffic back to our site. We want to rank well. We want to get those people that are actively out there shopping over to us where they can do business with us. The challenge here is that a lot of people come to us and say, well when somebody types in a word like insurance, I want to rank number one. Well. That's great, but as a local insurance agent, you're going up against Progressive.com, Allstate.com, Wikipedia, um, all of these great resources that have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pages on their site, all dedicated to ranking well for a term like insurance. Okay, So if that's your goal and you're a local, local agent, local player, you're probably not going to be able to accomplish that goal. Okay, So what you need to do is focus. Okay, while you can't rank for a blanket term like insurance, maybe you can rank well for a phrase like top insurance agents in Cheektowaga or top insurance agents in Amherst, New York. Okay, so really think about what your target audience is, what geography you're trying to reach, and build some of those terms into your SEO strategy. Uh, another thing that we do is when we're going through and doing keyword research for, for our clients and doing SEO uh, work for our clients' websites, we'll take a look at all of the keywords you currently rank well for. So we have some great uh, tools here that allow us to uh, look at your site and index Google and Bing and Yahoo and find out what terms you already are ranking for. In, uh, uh, and it might be that you rank number 99 or, or 100 um, in, in search results. But what that lets us do is identify the terms that uh, you, you rank well for, maybe five, uh, position 5 to 20 in search results. And we can sort that by the total number of people that search for that term. And what that allows us to do is really focus on what terms we can focus on to drive more targeted traffic. So if you rank number nine or 10 in search results for a given term, and it's a very relevant term to your business, we can focus on that term to get you from that nine or 10 position, maybe to that one, two, three, or four position, where you're actually gonna start getting some traffic. So just by refocusing your keyword strategy and incorporating those keywords into key places on your website, you can really have a big impact in search results. And um, that report that I mentioned, again, it's something proprietary that we run here, but uh, if anybody's on this call that would like one of those custom reports run for their business, uh, reach out to us. Our contact information will be at the end of the, the presentation here. Uh, happy to run one of those reports for you and, and give you some more targeted information and uh, a targeted SEO strategy. All right, Tony, number four. Yeah, and speaking of, of SEO, uh, one of really the, the best things you can do in business and for your website to get better results from SEO is to get serious about blogging. So SEO, you know, despite what you may have read in the past, it's not just about stuffing those keywords onto your homepage. Uh, search engines nowadays are more sophisticated than that. And they love original content. They love dynamic content. They love content that is being updated regularly and consistently. Um, and you need that dynamic content to rank well with SEO. Um, you know, adding some of these great articles to your site is really the easiest way to make your site a valuable resource for your vi for your visitors, and to get the attention of search engines. You know, the search engines um, they want to have the best content popping up on their results 
because the better the content is, the more the more people will use that search engine for searching, and then the more the higher are the advertising rates that that search engine. So it's all about them making money, um, but you can take advantage of that by improving the content on your site. Uh, further, you know you have your blogging, you get these articles written, and this is perfect for sharing via social media, and it's just another way to get traffic back to your site. So you post these articles uh, that you're already using on your site for SEO purposes. You post them on Facebook, you post them at Twitter, and you get your your audience from those platforms to click back and come to your site. And then you know they see your different calls to action. They're more inclined to purchase your product or schedule your service. And maybe even more importantly for the long term, they start to recognize you um, as an expert in the industry. So they rely on you for, for information, for tips, and they become regular readers of your blogs because of that. And you start to really grow your reputation in the community um, through, through that expert, uh, those expert articles. Great. Thanks, Tony. And building off of what Tony just said, um, a big portion of social media marketing is first coming up with that content and having those those blog posts, those articles, that, that valuable information on your site. Um, now the innovative strategy here is how do we get that content out to more people? And as Tony mentioned, social media is one of one of the key platforms that you can use to distribute your content and get it in front of the right people. But you need a plan and you need a strategy. Okay, social media marketing isn't about finding the youngest person in your audience, uh, a youngest person in your office that understands uh, Twitter and understands Facebook. Okay, it's about somebody that understands business. Okay, so look at building a strategy behind social media. And what I mean by that is, number one, first and foremost, you want to define goals for your social media marketing efforts. So what are some potential goals that, that we commonly hear about? Well, number one, people say, I want to be more visible. Well, that's not really a goal. Okay, it's great to be more visible, but what's the quantifiable action that you're going to take. Okay, I want to increase my impressions by X percent. Okay, that's a goal. I want to drive uh, X percent more people back to my website. That's a goal. I want to build, uh, I want to double the size of my audience and my following on social outlets. That's a goal. Set those goals and then look at metrics to make sure that you're meeting those goals. Next, you want to analyze your audience. Uh, all too often, I see companies that have these, these very large social media followings. And once you dig into them and, and dig a little bit deeper, you find that it's full of people from overseas and full of what, what seems to be fake accounts. And then I dig in a little bit deeper and realize that, oh, well, they got this offer through email that said for $10, we'll get you 1,000 Facebook followers. And really what they did is not only wasted $10, but really put themselves behind the eight ball. Okay? Because when that happens, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the other social networks, they look at the quality of your audience. They look at how often people engage with your content. They don't just look at sheer volume. They don't just look at some company and say, okay, well, this company has 1,000 followers. They're relevant. They look at the relevancy of your followers. So if you've built a following of people that aren't relevant to your business, that don't engage with your content, that don't look at your posts, your posts aren't going to get in front of the right people. Um, what you do want to do is, is, again, look at that audience, make sure that you're targeting the right people, make sure that you're getting a following from the right people. You want to develop compelling content like Tony just mentioned. Okay, you want that content, and we'll uh, mention this a few times on, on today's call, you want that content to reside on your website, and you want to use social as a delivery channel. So you, know, you pique people's interests about the content through social media, and then you drive them back to your website where they can take action. Uh, we talked about building a network, build a network with strong people. And then have an aggressive plan in place for regularly sharing content in the right places. If you find that you're doing a B2B traffic, a B2B business, LinkedIn is going to be the platform you're going to want to focus on. If you're doing more B2C, 
maybe Facebook and Twitter are the right platform, but you want to look at those metrics and you want to make sure that you're sharing on the right platform and see what platforms drive the most traffic for your business. And then uh, the last tip I have here is to really look at using paid distribution. People think social media is all free, and it can be, but if you put a little bit of paid distribution behind it, you can reach a, an amazingly wide audience of exactly the right people. And, and just to put this in per, into perspective, Facebook shows, let's say you have a thousand Facebook followers on your on your business page and you post something. Maybe only about 10% uh, on a good day are going to see that message. Facebook doesn't show it to all those 1,000 people. Okay, but you can use a little bit of paid promotion, not only reach those 1,000 people that already connect with you, but reach a whole wide array of new prospects. So use some paid promotion, um, use some Facebook remarketing, use some Facebook targeting on age, geography, job title, income, uh, life events. All of this is at your disposal and can be very, very effective. Yeah, and, and really speaking of effective content and engagement, and that brings us perfectly into tip number six, which is to get visual. So it, it's very easy, particularly on some platforms, to just go in and and type out an update and hit enter, and you know you're sending out a text message or something that people you the intention is for your audience to read it uh, and to maybe get something from from it and maybe to click back on a link and um, you know, and to take some kind of action. Well, to really get that action, get, to give it a jump start and to get people engaged, you really need to include some visual uh, imagery behind it. So, you know, a few stats that we found online uh, through BuzzSumo, um, you know, it really kind of paint the picture for us. And, you know, the first one is that social updates with images have a 2.3 times more engagement with your audience than those without images. Um, so for the extra, you know, few seconds that it might take to post a picture, now granted you may have, you have to go and find the picture and there might be a little bit of work behind that. And, and we've talked about planning out some of your social media in past webinars and maybe that becomes part of the process in order to create that engagement later on, you need to have your plan in place to begin with. But even over the course of some impromptu postings, um, you know, you may have an opportunity to find some company photos or some branded imagery or something related to your products and services that you can use as part of that posting to increase engagement. Um, you know, a couple other statistics, adding images to your Facebook posts on average doubles the amount of likes and clicks. And then when you get those likes and clicks, you know, that increases the audience that your message gets exposed to. So just to kind of increase that first round of likes and clicks with your immediate audience, that then exposes your message to their friends and their family and increases the, um, the size of your audience exponentially. Images on Twitter, those increase interaction by more than 300%. And, and, and also 94 you get 94% more views on your content with compelling images. So, that, so really the moral of the story here is don't just share content. Share content that looks amazing. And that's kind of the innovative aspect here. I mean, every company goes on and shares content nowadays or posts, you know, makes a post with a funny saying or, or something drawing attention to something that they're selling. Well, you know, more and more you're seeing imagery is becoming the norm and then you're seeing more video and audio and it's all intended to increase that engagement with your audience. So that's really what we would encourage you to do is, is to make sure that, that the information you're putting out there looks great and is attractive and gets people to notice it. Great. Uh, we've talked a lot about content and sharing that content and one of the biggies here, and this ties right back into your strategy, is making sure that that content is getting engagement and it's getting clicks. If you're not measuring that, you're going to guess. Okay. But measuring it is really, really easy. Uh, with digital marketing, everything can be measured. So use trackable links in all of your marketing efforts to see what's working and what isn't. I've included a link to Google's URL builder. So basically you can add a link 
into this uh, this this widget that, that Google provides and they'll create a trackable link for you and we're going to touch on Google Analytics here in a minute but uh, there's a whole section dedicated to specific trackable links so it keeps everything in one place and helps make sure that your online marketing efforts are fruitful. So use it, simple to set up. Yeah, and then speaking of Google and, and some of the ways that that can help your business, tip number eight, it's really a simple tip, but it's something that's often overlooked um, out there, and it's to make sure that your, your quote-unquote Google My Business page, your Google My Business listing is claimed and set up correctly so that your website, your reviews from social sites, your contact information are showing up and helping you to stand out from your competition, from all the people that are overlooking this. So it's, it's very simple and you go um, to google.com backslash business and from there you can set up your my business listing and so when people go and search for your business or related business they have easier access to all of your contact information and, and really a better way to find you and the services that you offer. All right, so keeping on the Google track, yeah, look at your website right now. If you don't have Google Analytics on your website or some other analytics, uh, robust analytics platform, install it. The information that you're going to get from that is invaluable. Uh, gives you the opportunity to make more effective marketing decisions. You can look and see what's actually happening. You can look at your website and see what's working and what isn't working. Um, you can test different offers. You can test different messages. Um, you can create and track individual landing pages. Uh, you can find what, what we like to call leaks in your website. So you can sort Google Analytics by pages that have high bounce rates. So somebody comes to your website, looks at one page, and then leaves. You want to fix those. You want to see what's wrong with that page and why people are leaving. You can look at and sort pages by exit rates. So you can, you can understand what page on your website people leave at. If they're leaving at your home page or they're leaving at a key service page or a key product page and you have a high percentage of exits on that page before they convert, you need to find out what's wrong with that page. You're never going to know there's a problem unless you look at the analytics. So a great way to examine your site, see what's working, what isn't working, and adjust. So tip number 10, we'll get back into content here briefly. Uh, and whether you're looking to embark on a content marketing plan or whether you currently have content marketing, leverage it use it. You might not even think you have it because maybe you don't have a blog on your website, but maybe you have a newsletter that you're emailing out to your customer base. Take some of that content, create a blog, add that newsletter content to your blog, put it on social media sites, post it to LinkedIn groups, make the most of it. You've already written it or somebody's written it. It exists. Um, from there, it's a pretty simple process to use it to promote your brand and promote your company. Um, now Brad talked a little bit about Google Analytics and, and absolutely you want to track results for all of this. But you should also, if, if you're using a, say an e-newsletter or email marketing, use an email marketing program that lets you see what content gets the most engagement. Um, or you know, even on a less technical front, when people come into your business, uh, if they call you up or if they walk through your door, ask them how they heard about you or what information attracted them to you. You know, often that's the best way. You find out exactly what you've put out there that is bringing people in, and then you can look to expand on that. And typically when it's online, it's something related back to the content that you're sharing. Um, again, social, e-newsletters, uh, blogging, those types of things. So, so really the, the kind of the moral of the story here is to just leverage your content as much as possible and to track you know, to, to piggyback on what Brad said the last slide, just track where it's coming from and how that can play into what you do content-wise going forward. Great. Thanks, Tony. And Tony mentioned earlier the importance of images. And when you think of images, you're probably thinking of stock photography or images somebody takes with their, their iPhone or, or, or a more traditional kind of static image. But you can get beyond that. And what we found is that infographics, 
work extremely well at driving engagement, um, ca uh, capturing a w uh, people's attention, and really driving results. So what an infographic is, it's taking a lot of information or a lot of data, but putting it together in a nice visual format that allows people to digest it very easily and get some, some good key takeaways. And there's just two examples here, but what infographics really do is a, a few things. They help position you as an expert in the field. Okay, so they show your audience that you continually do your research and you're at the forefront of, of your industry. They provide some great content to highlight on your website. Uh, if you have a blog or if you have a news or resources section on your website, uh, it's great to mix in infographics and mix up that text with a, a really nice visual element. They also provide weeks of great social media content. So when we develop a infographic for one of our clients, we'll break that up into six, seven, eight uh, different social media posts. So we'll take each content section, break that up into its own social media post, we'll post that for our clients, and then link back to the full infographic on their website great way to capture people's attention and draw them back into your website. And more specifically, I mentioned earlier we're working with some healthcare practices and October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we created this amazing infographic for one of our clients that shares some just uh, great statistics on uh, the importance of early detection and early screening, uh, great statistics on breast cancer awareness and, and recovery rates, and um, just really compelling information. We have this wonderful uh, infographic that's going to be posted on their website on October 1st, and then throughout the month of October, we're using these little snippets from this infographic to drive traffic back to their website. So really, really interesting. And last but not least, people love to share infographics. Other companies love to share infographics. So as they share your infographic that you created, number one, it's branded to your company if you've done it right, includes your contact information, but then it can also create more inbound links back to your website. So as people share this, they link back to your website and building inbound links is kind of the holy grail for improving search results. So as more and more websites out there link back to your website, you rank higher in search results. So this is a great way to do that and create really shareable content. Yeah, Brad, that's great. I, uh, you know, I always say there's a reason why uh, USA Today is so popular and as a newspaper, and it relates to both your slide that you just did and then this slide here, which is, you know, take a less is more approach to your blog content. So sometimes less is more. Um, and research has shown that a human being's attention span is down now to an average of about eight seconds and officially shorter than a goldfish. Uh, hence, the, hence the imagery here of the goldfish, which is at nine second, a nine second attention span. Uh, to compound that problem, think about your own email inbox in the morning or your social media feed when you check Facebook in the evening, people get inundated with content. So a super long thesis about your services or your business, while it might have a lot of great details, may not be the most effective thing to getting your message across. You know, we suggest you keep posts between 350 and 500 words on your blog. You know, make them very manageable, both from a visual standpoint and from an informational standpoint. Uh, and this is where my USA Today reference comes in. You know, use bullet points, use images, use text formatting to kind of break up the paragraphs or break up, you know, the quote-unquote boredom and keep interest, keep the reader's interest, um, enable them to spend their uh, short attention span being focused on what you have to say, and that will help you get your message across better than pages and pages uh, on one topic or on one, uh, you know, on one product. Great. Thanks, Tony. So Tony and I have, have talked a lot today about blogging and content and sharing this information. And this is all great. It's all very relevant. But if nobody cares about what you're sharing, is it going to have any business impact for you? No. Uh, it might ha help a little bit in search rankings, but if nobody's engaging with your content, if, if nobody finds it relevant, it's not going to drive any value for you because you're not driving any value for them. So before you publish content, ask yourself the question, is somebody really going to care about this? And how do you find out if, if somebody's going to care about this? Well, the first thing I suggest you do is go and Google the topic. 
So whatever the topic is that you're going to write about or, or you're going to share on social, Google it. And see if people are talking about that already. Go to, go to articles relating to that already. Scroll all the way down and look at comments. See what people are saying. You've got to be a little careful with comments, uh, but, but it can be an interesting look at whether or not people care about this topic. Uh, look at forums where your audience resides. So it might be industry-related uh, websites. It might be LinkedIn, but look at those forums, see what people are talking about. You can go to a, a site like Cura, so Q-U-O-R-A.com. People ask question upon question upon question about everything and anything you can think of. Go there, type in the topic that you're going to write about, see what people are asking, see what, the, uh, uh, what questions they have, and it can help you craft content that really matters. And then uh, another site that we love is called AnswerThePublic.com. It gives you a real good indication for what people are typing into Google uh, to search for. So it'll give you a real good indication for uh, what questions you may want to answer. But, but above all else, just don't write to write right to add value. So think about what your clients and your prospects biggest challenges are and build your content around that. Yeah, and that really plays well into this slide as well because although sales pitches and self-promotion certainly have their place in your marketing plan, in the end you need to speak to what your audience wants to hear and you need to speak to you know what is going to solve their problem for them. Um, so that's that's really what it is. You want to address your target market, their issues and needs, and how you can help them. And this is not only uh, in the digital realm. Obviously, this this could be if you're doing traditional advertising as well, whether it's TV, radio, billboard. Um, you want to focus on what they want to hear and make it relevant to them and their issues, and then that's what's going to get you the engagement of your audience and get people talking about you and sharing your content and doing all the things that will help make you successful from a marketing standpoint. And just to share an example, we were doing some marketing for a tech company. And uh, the owners of the this tech company said, our software is so great and it's wonderful and it helps people run more efficiently and save money and increase uptime. We need to talk about all of the features of this software because that's what people really care about. And we looked at them and said, they don't care about the features of, this, of your software. They care about what problem it's going to solve for them and what the value is. And we couldn't get that through to them. And they said, no, no, no. They need to know about all these features. So we said, okay, um, customers always right, uh, e even though we tried to warn them. So we said, let's do two articles about features on your software. And we did that and we shared those and, and they got about 60 visits each and no conversions. So people got to the article and they bounced. Okay, they hit the page and they left. No conversions at all. So we said, okay, that didn't work. So let's revisit this. Let's go back to the value. And instead of writing about all of the features about your software, let's talk about running a more efficient company. Let's talk about increasing uptime and what that really means to your business's profitability. Now we mixed in the message about uh, the features of the software that, that do that, but we focused on the problem. Now the original articles got 60 visits. These new articles got well over 600 visits and 10% conversion, meaning that the people didn't just hit the site and leave, they hit the site and then through a strong call to action went over to the service page and went over to the demo page. So think about uh, what your audience really cares about. Don't just talk about you. Uh, next is making your website a hub of your online activity. So when we look at your website, that's at the center. We use social media to drive traffic, but we don't want people hanging out on social media. We want to get them back to your website. We talked about reporting already. We talked about getting found on search and SEO and driving that back to your website. We just talked a little bit about lead conversion, so look at what marketing activities are actually driving engagement and driving uh, inquiries. We talked a lot about content, and we touched on email marketing a little bit, but use email marketing as a way to stay in contact with not only your MB prospects, but those C and D prospects, too, that might be hanging out there that you can't devote your time to. Email marketing is a great platform. But above all else, use all of these channels to drive traffic back to your website where they can take action. 
Yeah, and getting people back to the website nowadays uh, really involves getting them to do it from their mobile device more and more often. Uh, in fact, more than 75% of all Americans who use the Internet access it both on mobile and desktop. And further, from an industry report in 2015, more than half of consumer traffic to U.S. websites comes from mobile. So, what does this tell us? I mean, this is this is this is big. I mean, this is this is the trend. This is the way the numbers are going. If your site is not designed for mobile responsiveness, you're not giving your audience the best experience, and you're likely to lose them to a competitor, uh, which means you're going to lose business. Now, further. Google has introduced AMP. So if you haven't heard of AMP, it's uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages Project. Uh, and essentially what it is, is a way to encourage site publishers to improve the mobile experience for the greater internet audience. Um, and what it will do is give search result precedence to pages that have optimized, that have been optimized for mobile use. So not only uh, does optimization mean a better experience for your existing customers and people who search you out directly online? But now it will further and further mean that you will be, without a mobile responsive design, you will be less likely to be found by new customers and people searching for your products and services. So that's a, a huge reason to make sure that your website is now um, ideal for the mobile users uh, going forward. Great, thanks Tony. Uh, next on our list, number 17, is to look at proactively managing your online reputation. And what we mean by this is be active on Yelp. Uh, look at sites like TripAdvisor, there's HomeAdvisor, Google, WebMD. There's review sites for every single industry out there. You need to pay attention to those and why. There's some, some pretty compelling statistics, and I'll just share a few of these. 88% um, of consumers out there trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations from friends and family. Okay, so people trust what they're reading online in review sites. 90% of people are using these online reviews to determine the quality of a business or the quality of a product. So if you have one or two negative reviews out there and no positives, they're going to think your business is horrible. You need to proactively go out there and build those positive reviews. And uh, Tony mentioned the importance of, of mobile for search rankings, and it's very important to have a mobile site. Reviews also have a big impact on search rankings. Uh, there's a recent SEO study that found that eight of the top 50 search ranking factors uh, for local search were tied specifically to reviews. So as you get more and more reviews on more and more sites, uh, Google, Bing, and Yahoo are going to see your site as more relevant and can help increase in, in search results. And tying this to revenue streams, um, Harvard, the Harvard University, did a study about online review sites. And what they found was that um, they looked at, at the restaurant industry, and they found that just increasing your Yelp rating by one star uh, drove a 9% increase in revenues for those restaurants. And this stretches across other industries too. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, everything from contractors to physicians, uh, you need to pay attention to your reviews. If you need help with that, we have a full webinar that focuses on reviews and, and a full platform that helps companies uh, proactively generate more positive reviews uh, from your customers. So tip number 18, make the most of your big events. Now the one, you know, you know I think a lot of organizations are doing this. They, they will typically do this through PR. Um, and one of the main events that we focus on here uh, is an anniversary. Um, you know, longevity in the marketplace breeds confidence from both your existing customers and, and your potential customer base. Uh, this can be, you know, doing something, do an anniversary logo. Put it on all your print materials for a year. Put it on all your uh, digital platforms. Make special announcements on your website page. Uh, maybe throw some special events for customers around this around your anniversary event. Uh, you know, focus on how you've adapted to change, how you've remained competitive, how you've managed to innovate, all in the interest of your customers and their needs. And that will definitely breed confidence from people considering uh, your business for their business. Um, a great example of this, our parent company, 
uh, Haley Marketing is this year celebrating 20 years of being in business. And some of the things that they've done at every event this year, they, they've been sending out pre-show mailers, so maybe party hats and and party favors and treats, you know, things you might find at a at a kid's birthday party or um, you know things that are tied into uh, birthday and celebration, and it's really given the organization some great talking points at these events. You know, the people that they've sent these things to have come up and remarked and thanked the people at Haley for sending them these special treats and talked about the 20 years and the changes that have come about, and it's really given. Haley, a great platform to go into some of the ways, again, that they've changed, they've innovated, they've remained competitive. And what it really becomes is a great sell story to those people who are coming up to thank you and are coming up to congratulate you. And all of a sudden, you're increasing your business because you've focused on the success that you've had over the past X amount of years. Terrific. Uh, this tip 19 really isn't that innovative. And it's simple. It's to say thank you. And I say that it's not innovative, but the reason that I wanted to include it in this presentation is because in the digital age, in the social media world, and uh, as we're, we're tied up in email all day, I think oftentimes we neglect to say thank you to our clients. So clients want to know that they're appreciated. People want to know that they're appreciated. So how do you go about saying thank you? today uh, to, to really stand out and be different and be a little innovative. Well, it's getting back to old school. It's handwriting a thank you note. Okay, Hand write that, hand address the envelope, send it out. It goes a long, long way. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up. Send out a Thanksgiving card, share a message. Um, maybe you offer a, a special discount to your, your top uh, clients or uh, maybe hold educational events um, similar to what we're doing today. This is a big reason that we hold these education educational events is, is to thank people for listening, to thank people for engaging with us. We want to teach you how to be more effective marketers. And if you're more effective and you see more results, we're going to get more business that way. So think of different ways and unique ways that you can say thank you. It could be uh, birthday cards or special occasions. It could be a some, something as simple as doing a personal call to check in uh, on, a, on a customer or a prospect uh, with no other agenda other than just to check in and see how everything's going. A great idea or a great thing to consider as part of your sales efforts now uh, is direct mail. And you may have noticed this through your own mailbox. Uh, direct mail is really becoming an underused medium now. You know, as the focus is, as more and more focus is on digital marketing, digital communication, direct mail all of a sudden can be really a great way to get attention, uh, to get your message into the hands of the person that you need it to be in front of. Um, you can use it in, in advance of your sales calls, so it helps potential customers know who you are a bit and familiarize themselves with you. Uh, it may even give them a chance to check you out online, whether they're going to your site or your social media platforms. But it, it gets you in front of them prior to you know, giving them a call or stopping in or sending them an email. Uh, and it all of a sudden makes that you know, quote unquote cold call uh, a little warmer because they, they know who you are, already. they're a little bit familiar with you, and they're more apt to accept um, you know, accept your phone call and have a conversation with you. Uh, I know Brad. Brad, you have some great examples um, of some different mailers that you've been a part of, and you know, maybe you want to go into some details on those. Yeah, you know, when we when we say direct mail, um, we don't just mean a postcard and sending out a postcard here or there. Really, we're talking about something that stands out. So, a few examples of things that we've done in the past. Uh, we had one client who was selling into um, multi-million and billion-dollar organizations. So. Uh, they all they did was target 20 very specific buyers okay so instead of sending out a mass direct mail uh, which costs a lot of money they focused on 20 people and did something that was knock your socks off so one of the mailers were um, beats headphones okay so headphones that are that cost a hundred dollars uh, they were branded and colored to the company had a really strong compelling message and value proposition in uh, but they sent that before they made a follow-up call 
same company um, at the end of their campaign. So they had several steps of this campaign with just these wow mailers. At the end of that campaign, they sent a seven inch LCD screen with a pre-recorded message from the CEO. Uh, very, very impactful. We've had some other companies uh, that have done some interesting things. We worked with a staffing company that was reaching out to people and the message of their campaign was hiring is a pain in the ass. Because it is, hiring is difficult. Uh, so to have some fun with it, they sent this um, three-dimensional box, uh, and inside that box was a stuffed donkey uh, with the company's logo on it, and a card inside that said just that, hiring's a pain in the ass, but it doesn't have to be. Again, something that really stood out and was differentiated. Now, uh, we talked about the effectiveness of direct mail when done appropriately, but don't just leave it on an island. Don't just let it sit out there and hope that it works. Um, surround your direct mail efforts with, with more inbound marketing too. So we mentioned effective ways to use PPC, pay-per-click marketing and online marketing. Take your direct mail list that you're targeting people um, with, upload that to Facebook, run ads for that audience, upload it to Google, surround those people not only with your direct mail, but surround them online. Before you pick up the phone to call them, and that's a key, call them after you send direct mail, don't just hope direct mail makes your phone ring, integrate that with your sales process, but before you call them, connect with them on LinkedIn. Make sure that they see your name ahead of that sales call. It's going to be way more effective and way more impactful. And, you know, we touched on it a little bit with direct mail, and, you know, my point there was that print is not necessarily dead, and with some creativity, it can actually be a fantastic way to help you stand out from the crowd and reach your prospects, particularly as they become used to digital-only communication. Now, Brad touched on some great examples of direct mail. It can also be used in, in other ways, you know, not necessarily ways that you're sending out to prospects. I mean, you see some imagery here on this slide of some, some die-cut business cards or some car wraps, uh, you know, product wrapping. It can be embossing. It can be printing on metal or printing on glass. You know, really use your imagination. There's tons of different options out there that, when done correctly, can really help you stand out and can certainly complement any digital program that you may have as well. Um, you know, it's a great way to show your creativity and, and to show how you can stand apart from the competition when you can do some different things with print. Yeah, and we, we worked with a tool and die company, and instead of just standard business cards, they actually printed business cards on metal uh, that were, were cut and dyed. So just really interesting way to, to carry through their, their value into print. Um, next on our list, and, and probably one of my favorite tips here, is calls to action. Uh, this goes with, with print. Every piece of print should have a strong call to action to get people to convert. Um, but more specifically, look online. Um, I want everybody after this call to go to your website and make sure that every single page on your website has a call to action. You make it easy for people to do business with you. If your website doesn't have call to, calls to action, if people have to work to do business with you, they're not going to. They're going to go somewhere else. And I'll give you a perfect example. I mentioned earlier we were working with some healthcare practices. Um, one in particular had a schedule an appointment page on their website. Uh, I was very happy to see that. Uh, people could schedule their appointment right then and there. But it was a little bit hidden. Uh, you had to go through three clicks on the site before you could actually get to that page. It wasn't for, uh, at the forefront. All we did is went and incorporated that on the home page, and then it incorporated that in the sidebar of every single page of their website. Okay? This change was made two months ago. Okay? And in just two months, we've seen um, conversions on that page. So people going to that page and filling out that schedule and appointment form go up by 67.96% in two months. So just investing in, in those calls to action had a really, really big impact on their business. Tip number 24, and I would bet that many people on, the, on this call are doing this, but if not, you know, maybe make it part of your regular routine. Uh, you know, there's a show out there called Undercover Boss, and, and we really recommend taking a lesson from this show and shopping your company. Um, and that could be 
just doing something as simple as going to your website and, and pretending you're a first time visitor, trying to get that, um, that perspective of the person coming to your site for the first time and touching on some of the things Brad just talked about, how easy is it to get to where you as a company wants them to get? And as a user, how easy is it to find information that's relevant to you or that's important to you? Um, and then really go through and think about that objectively and ask yourself, how would you rate that experience? You know, do, then go do the same thing for one of your competitors and maybe compare the impressions that you have of their shopping experience or of their website compared with yours and see how you stack up. And that may give you a great opportunity or I should say some, some uh, you know, not only a great motivation but some great ideas on things that you can do to improve the visitor experience um, that, that people have with your company. Yeah, and, and building off of that, our, our tip number 25 is to strive for top marks in all of your customer touch points. Um, everything from simply picking up the phone, and uh, our receptionist here does an absolutely amazing job. I get compliments all the time that say, "Who?" An clients will say all the time, who answers your phone? Because she's always so pleasant. And something as simple as smiling when you pick up and answer the phone goes a long way in presenting a very professional, friendly uh, demeanor. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're transparent and honest. If you do screw up, um, we're all human, at some point you're going to screw up, own it, um, fix it, and explain how it's not going to happen again. But be transparent. Don't try to hide things. Um, another, another item here is, and I mentioned it earlier, pick up the phone and talk to people. Don't always rely on email. Okay, just that once in a while, personal connection through the phone goes a long way. Um, always look for ways to streamline and do better. And this ties directly into the point that Tony just mentioned about being a shopper. But put yourselves in your customer's shoes. See what their experience is. See where you can streamline things. See how you can make doing business with you easier, better, faster. Um, we do this internally. So we have a support team here started with one person um, that answered our, our help desk. And what we found is that we weren't able to answer all of our client inquiries uh, within a two to three hour time frame. So we said, well, we want to get it down to an hour. How do we do that? Well, we had to hire another person. And as we've continued to grow, we've had to hire another person. So now we have three people um, simply in our support team that work and help our clients and answer questions. And they not only answer questions about um, our products and our services, it's gotten to a point where we're answering questions for other people's uh, products and services. Uh, we do a lot of website development where we integrate third-party um, platforms, so uh, different technology um, on, on websites. And it's gotten to a point where our support team actually fields questions about other people's software. And, and we ask them, we say, you know, you, you understand that this is, this is from your software vendor. And, and they, we actually had the comment back, I completely know that. And I completely know that this isn't your problem. But you guys are able to answer my questions before my software developer even acknowledges that I sent the question in. So by being tops in customer service, it'll go a long way to retaining clients and making sure that new people want to do business with you. And I mentioned earlier, um, we had one bonus tip. And our bonus tip is, is to represent your company. So every person in your company is the face of your company. And everyone that you see on the screen here, this is, this is our team here at, at Barker. Uh, everybody is empowered to make the right decisions for our clients. Uh, one of our uh, mission statements, one of our core values is something we call the rule of three. Uh, we, we empower our employees to make the right decisions. Number one, uh, is the decision right for our clients? Number two, is the decision right for our company, right for Barker Marketing? And number three, is the decision right for each of our team members? Everyone on this screen, we want to make sure it's the right decision. And if we meet that rule of three, we know it's a great business decision. It's a win-win-win, and everyone's going to be happy. We're going to have really engaged employees. We're going to have people that want to work here and want to work for our clients, and that's how you grow business. With that said, uh, I wanted to open it up to questions, and we had one or two questions come in during the presentation. 
I also want to encourage you to reach out to us if you have additional questions. I, I mentioned earlier uh, that we're happy to run an SEO keyword report for you and give you some insight into how you can improve search rankings there. Uh, feel free to reach out to Tony or myself. Our email addresses are here. You can pick up the phone and call us if you'd like. Uh, we're happy to help there. Um, and just one or two questions came in during the presentation. So uh, the first question that came in, Tony, uh, was how do you set up a Google page? Can you repeat that URL of how to set up your Google My Business page? Yeah, if you go, just go to google.com backslash business, and it's really a pretty straightforward um, process. It's filling out your company information. You'll have to go through a verification process with Google. Um, but just start by going to that site um, and, and having all your information ready that you want to input, and it's, it's a very simple process from there, and definitely worth the, the few minutes that it'll take to get it up and going. Great, thank you. Another question came in when we were talking about um, Google and Facebook remarketing. It's also called retargeting, and how you go about setting that up. Um, there's a few different ways. You can go and you can create an advertiser account and you can manage everything on your own. Um, or you can work with uh, with an agency like ours where we go in and we actually set up the account for you. Um, there's a little piece of code that needs to be added to every page of your website. So that gets installed on your website. Once that's installed, people that now visit your site from here on out are, are tagged. Uh, and you can begin marketing to them over time. So as you continue to build visitors to your website, more and more people are tagged and, and have this cookie or this tracking token on your site. Ads can begin following them on Facebook and on Google's ad platform. So again, very effective, um, great way to, to market to people, stay top of mind, and increase conversions. Uh, another question uh, came in during uh, the slide in which we were talking about infographics. And the question was, how do you even start creating an infographic? Okay, well, number one, it's thinking about something that people are interested in. Um, I mentioned earlier about breast cancer awareness uh, and tying it to a, a national event is, is a great start. Um, number two, you want to look for different data points. So look for research out there on whatever topic uh, you, you, you're addressing and look for research, statistics, information that you can uh, present and also source at the end of your infographic. And then when it comes to actual design, there's a few ways to go about it. You can do it, um, you can try doing it on your own. A uh, few sites out there, there's some infographic generators, so you can um, search Google for create an infographic. Um, but there's two that, that I found um, to be pretty easy to use. Uh, one is called pick to chart It's P-I-K-T-O chart.com. And uh, there's also another one called Vengage, so V-E-N-N-G-A-G-E.com. Um, those are generators. Or um, you can work, again, with an, with an agency uh, like ours. We, we have very cost-effective um, infographic and, and content solutions for other companies. With that said, that brings us to all of our questions, and, and I want to thank everybody for joining us on today's call. Don't be shy. Reach out to us if you have any questions or you want some of that SEO research, and we're happy to help. And then also be on the lookout. Uh, we'll be announcing our next webinar in the next few weeks, and you can always stay up to date at barker.com forward slash webinars. Thank you again, and we hope to talk with you soon.